Hello everyone again, and welcome to the uh, Big Data in Industry uh, section of this forum in 2020. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Carmen Salvador Palomeque. Uh, at the swap here, I am a industry liaison, and um, I work for Thermo Fisher Scientific as a uh, field application scientist. So, um, this year, we want to focus our efforts in um, improve and, and rise up and grow the uh, connections that we have uh, with the industry. And this is the, the, purposes, uh, the purpose of this creating this section in particular. And yeah, we are really excited because in the end, we think that improving this relationship we are going to make the most of uh, our events and give on like strengthening it up. So yeah, um, let me introduce our first speakers. Um, they come from the uh, Navantia, Australia, TLS Digitalis, uh, and they are going to speak about TLS digitalization roadmap. And our speakers are Mr. Alfonso Garcia Valdez. Hello and welcome is the managing director of Navantia Australia. And then we have Dr. Gennaro Sanchez, who is the chief technology officer. Please welcome and take it away. Thank you so much, Carmen. The ambassador of Spain, the resta member of the Macquarie University, the European. Thank you for inviting us to this amazing forum. Really, we are enjoying you cannot imagine one year ago when we attended the last forum meeting in Canberra as, as a guest of all of you how, and we took the opportunity to see how closer we are in different swing lines but running with the same target you know to really do the things better smarter cheaper and quicker in different worlds could be much better to, to really uh, try to understand what are two humble members of the defense industry here with all distinguished audience, all of the all your scientifics and so, how we are doing here. Really this, we are doing, <laughs> not sure what happened with this, but anyway, we are doing naval vessels. Again, probably we need to destroy some uh, cliches before to entry in uh, how the defense industry will head to the humans. Uh, just take in mind that, for example, uh, Cain killed Abel using a human, an animal bone. That means that the human don't need industrial defense to kill it all together, <laughs> each other, you know. Uh, we can do that much uh, just with everything in the world. Means how we can join it, uh, the, the industry and the scientifics in the raw model that we are starting could be good to make a quick summary of when Navantia arrived, landed to Australia. We arrived in, with two luggage uh, in 2006. In 2012, we created the permanent establishments and the first uh, Navantia PTY, that was a fully Australian company, supporting with the workforce all the work done from formerly Navantia SASME, that it is a hundred states started owner company in Spain. But Navantia is fully Australian. Uh, we have right now about 200 uh, members, 96% uh, of them in engineers. We are spread all around Australia, but the, the Melbourne hub is in the leading hub is in Melbourne. Uh, we have also people working in Sydney, our base, in Garden Island, our base supporting the through life support of these units. And we also are people right now in Perth uh, waiting for the second unit of the AOR, that it is those that you see in the middle. It is an auxiliary oil replacement vessel. And uh, after this uh, success history, we can tell in Australia to support the Australian Navy in the design and building up process of 100,000 tons of uh, naval units in this country we are the commitment to really help them and help us 
to create a through life support inside of try to take measure on how healthy the naval units are. When the naval units are talking about health, they are talking about readiness to win a sea. We need to know how the system, because a naval unit is, is like a human body. There is a complex union of different systems working together, fully aligned all, just providing data, and someone controlled all the data that it is in a human, it's a brain, and in, a, in our naval unit is, is an IPMS. The IPMS is the integrated uh, platform management system that it is a surf of data collect collector in which originally intended to, to really provide decision to the owners, to the, to the user, the final user on board, means they need to interpret the data of the system and they are just indicated to the, to the user how the platform is working for a complete emission. But on top of that, we decided that all amount of big data, probably compared with the thing that we are hearing today, big could be put it in no capitals, but anyway, big at all. How to manage this, all of this information to really put it in somewhere that we can do it in less strict areas, I mean ashore, and grab decision, providing multiple element in that decision that we can call ship zero. This ship zero is how we can put it all the data that we need to grab decisions. And for that, we need also to really put it all the information in some system that could be called a digital twin. In this roadmap, we are working in create mathematical models of, for example, if you are taking them out of a pump, a pumps, the rationale underneath a pump, if you are thinking in how to model in this pump, it's like a heart, it's a human heart. It just only is pressurizing and moving fluids around a system, piping system. Probably the, the final outcome and the input in a human heart and in a pump for a naval architect could be a little bit different, but the rationale underneath in the mathematical model you need to replicate the digital of this is probably closer than we believe. In that path, uh, really, we have uh, many commitments with the Navy. We are really proud to see that the, we are close to have a proportion package digital twin shortly. You know that a vessel like this has more than 200 different systems, more than 200,000 kilometers in cabling, uh, 2,000 2, crew member. And uh, as said before, the rationale underneath the IPMS in turn, in originally was to try to reduce the crew members, as well as the drone is trying to do with the pilots in a firefighter. Uh, Navy in the 90s, tw early 20s, decided that they probably to try to reduce, because attracting it for many countries to join crew members, uh, sailors and so forth, decreased a lot. And they are considering to really create platform system that could be managed with less people. Finally, the US Navy, that probably is uh, far away of many of us, in that path decided that probably the limit of the human needed for really manage this amount of information still need humans. Probably this decision was taken because the state of the art at that time, but I guess that we need to balance how the humans will be needed or not in the future new normal as someone calls, you know. I get that the, that the human need be necessary at all because uh, we mentioned here in, during these speeches the unstructured data, how to, and we still manage on board many aromatical systems providing alarm, aromatical alarms, alarms, but also many other information that still be unstructured. I Means we need to interpret it, and for interpret it we need humans, human aids, human brains, and a human decision. And we are on the path. And in that path, we want to introduce Genaro, that it is our CTO. Uh, believe me that there are no other navies that has uh, nothing to show really now, but we are on the path. And I, I get that in the closer years, we will have something to show all of you. Thank you guys and see you. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, I will try to be very quick, so let's I pass uh, through these slides because it, this could show you what an IPMS is and what we can manage in the IPMS. So basically, a chip is a system of systems, and we are trying to monitor that kind of things. Uh, well, this is a slide that tries to summarize our path, what we call uh, in not sure if chip jar 4.0 or something like that. So uh, there are some ideas uh, there. One of the ideas is that we need to use data in, uh, and probably uh, more than what we are doing now. Okay. So uh, I would like to, to connect what, uh, well, I would like to talk just to the basics and connect uh, data science with, uh, with um, what we call digital. So here's what Alfonso said about digital or uh, ship zero. And first I would like to talk about uh, the understanding of what's data, what's uh, information and what's, what's knowledge. So basically it's the why we need uh, to manage data. So uh, I will start just with a quick example. Uh, probably most of you know what data is, what information is and what knowledge is, but I just want to remind and to connect that with, uh, with industrial needs and in this case with our needs. So uh, data, just get a quick example, it was uh, just a traffic lights. Data is red, yellow, um, green. Information is when we can put that in a context. Uh, for example, data is red, that information is red, please not do not cross, do not pass to the street. That's information, okay? So everyone knows the rules about the information of the, of the traffic. But knowledge is something a little bit different. So if you are in a, trying to cross a street or in a car, or maybe we can think of a new Tesla car or something like that, maybe the information is, is not the same than knowledge. So if you, if you want to think what knowledge is, is my goodness, there's a truck coming uh, 100 miles per hour. Can I cross? Can I not cross? What can I do? So in the same way, uh, we could have some examples in, in our business. For example, with the technical performance measures of a ship. So we are talking about the buoyancy, the weights, so something that allow us to design a ship. So as an example is, okay, we could know the data of the ship. We can know the weights of the ship. We can know, we can do some calculations with our weights. We could have some information. Information means, okay, the weight of the ships is 80% of the weight that we estimated for the ship. So, but is that knowledge? Maybe not, because uh, knowledge could mean, my goodness, we are very close to the limit of the ship. Maybe we don't have a submarine, we will have a rock. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so that's why we need to uh, data science here. So, how we can capture data. So as uh, you said, uh, most of you said previously, we can use, of course, the brain. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the system that can capture data now, but we can emulate the brain with uh, or some functions of the brain, not uh, with neural networks and machine learning. So that's, that's the basic thing of this. So uh, how we can capture that knowledge, of course, a set of rules. Uh, that's not easy and when we're talking about a very complex system like a ship, it's a system of systems and with algorithms. So uh, we cannot take decision based, based just on a set of rules. So we need to uh, use uh, modeling, physical modeling. So the idea is that we can model the systems of the ship. We can do functional models if we can use machine learning to produce uh, better models. So that's the idea, not just the set of rules, and not just the algorithms. And uh, with that models, we can build something that we can call the digital twin. Okay. So the digital twin, what is a digital twin? So how many of you think that this is not a digital twin? <laughs> okay. So there is a lot of definition. This, this is something similar that happened with big data. So, uh, okay. Everyone knows what big data is, but there is no uh, very good definition of what is big data. Okay, uh, Jorge uh, said something uh, really clever about that. So with digital twin, it's more or less the same. So we have an understanding of what is digital twin. So for us, a digital twin is a dedicated virtual replica of an element or a process. It's a set of objects. So we have digital information and we have algorithms and we need to represent the behavior. We need to represent the behavior of the ships or in this case, our products and need to be connected 
or could be integrated uh, with its physical twin. So this is a very, very hard challenge. So how to connect a ship, uh, a virtual ship with the ship. We can do that inside the ship, but we need to do that outside the ship. For example, in a center of command that could monitor what's happening with the ship and can uh, help to predict to the commanders to be in a, in a base what to do with the ship. Okay, Not also with the product, that's a ship. We can also uh, do things with the shipyard. So uh, we can do things during the maintenance. So, um, uh, so basically, okay, just one minute, perfect. <laughs> just to end. Okay, are we using big data now? Not now, but as uh, Alfonso said, it's very clear that in the future we will need to use big data. So uh, there is not just a, a single source of truth, uh, what is the APMS that could capture uh, signals. We are managing now around 15 gigabytes of, uh, of uh, data per ship per year, so something like that. It's quite big, but maybe we could say that we could manage that uh, with uh, MATLAB <laughs> and maybe with Excel. Okay, and sometimes, but, uh, but if we are incorporating video, sound, or uh, pictures, whatever, uh, it's something quite different. Okay. So we will need uh, big data techniques for that. And that's all for me. Any question? Thank you very much for the uh, talk. And it's pretty impressive all the work that you, you are doing. Yeah, Alante is doing in Australia and surely <clears throat> everywhere. Thank you. Uh, we are going to give pass to the round of questions. Um, please. I have not much about the question. But thank you. Thank you very much. And it was more thinking about unmanned marine vehicles. I think you talk a little bit of, you know, if maybe humans are not needed in the worlds of the future, but we probably have some, you know, ships without people. The amount of data these ships will need something you're, are you considering at the moment or? Absolutely. So uh, now we are doing a, a project, or the, the, really it's a pilot project that is, uh, uh, sorry, here or there. <laughs> so, okay, absolutely. So we are now managing a, a project that is, uh, it's working? Come, come here. Uh, I will. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, we are currently um, doing a project. Uh, in Spain, in this case, it's in Cadiz. That is uh, uh, unmanned ship, okay. And of course, we are applying this techniques in, in with a small ship. Of course, it's not a big ship, but uh, what we can see is the importance of mm, transform very well the data into knowledge. So that's the key thing. So because we can get data, 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 but maybe we need to interpret that, okay. So that that's the thing. And absolutely, in the future. You need to think that the, uh, there will be um, artificial intelligence managing uh, drones, uh, armas, arms, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> army, uh, will be using uh, artificial intelligence, so the ship should respond to that, and maybe you need to manage a lot of information, not only in the platform, that is our business, main business, but also in the combat systems. Thank you. Any other questions, please, Luis? Uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, it has been fascinating, really interesting presentation. But just thinking in all the bridges and links between science and and, um, and defense, and um, uh, we work on on the analysis of uh, what we call the healthcare ecosystems. And one of the areas uh, we have found very interesting is uh, what comes from defense. For instance, how um, the uh, um, knowledge. Uh, has been used in the Navy in the um, United States for running the uh, nuclear submarines and how they have analyzed a whole set of decision making and how different people in a nuclear submarine can say something when they detect an error in the system. And my question is, uh, uh, how do you incorporate uh, expert knowledge into your algorithms and your rules? How? Okay. Well, um, basically, um, 
uh, we can uh, model, for example, the propulsion of a ship. Okay? We can have a model, a functional model, and we can get the real data from the ship. So we, we have sensors in the ship that are monitoring what the ship is doing. So we can adjust the, the variables. So I think it's this slide, what, you, what you're mentioning. So you, we can adjust uh, some parameters of the, of the algorithm, of the model in this case, uh, based on the data that we have from the ship. Uh, that's it. Uh, the, the right point here is, is to be sure that you have the editor, the... how, uh, for instance, if you have an algorithm with uh, um, an estimate, yeah. uh, is the expert providing the range of the estimate? How, how the expert it's incorporated into the, uh, the, the expert, the, the expert. The expert. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, we did some calculations first. Probably Alfonso knows more about that. Uh, during the design, we, the experts are providing the basic data for the for the model. So that's what the experts are doing. So uh, our uh, experts in hydrodynamics or experts in, in uh, propulsion systems are determining the model of the, of the system. Yeah, it's a good question because- uh, That's a really good question. Yeah, really. At the end, the designer need to work with patterns of behavior of all the elements that they are managed and they are included in the complex system we, we will live, deal with. The question is, the providers that they are not just us, it's also the OEM, the original standard manufacturer or whatever supplier, need also to bring us with a huge of knowledge that they have recorded years and years and years using this kind of element and the lesson not improving the designer that they have. And how to collect this information in the right patterns that they need to provide to us to really establish the stage zero or for, or for the future digital twins. Because if that's, this uh, work didn't, didn't work, really all the data that you are entering really has, is a bull of shit, you know? And then the only way to be sure that you are really will obtain the, the outcome that you really need is to be sure at the first stage that the patterns that you have dealing with are those correct. And when you are pretty sure of that, you can start to enter different inputs and see the outputs. And if the output is really correlation, correlation with the original patterns, you still are on that if your model is not good working or because the original patterns are not really incorporated all the environment in which they need to work. And that's the area in which that's only the human can deal with. I get that probably in the future, not sure, probably none of us will be here, but I get that we still need our brain to really distinguish what are the wrong way. Because at the end, that's the outcome. We have not obtained good outcomes because the pattern that we have, especially in, in proportion packets, we are done. Uh, so close. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can discuss later on. But anyway, it's a very good point, and it is the, the that is the, the needy that I have from the scientists because the 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 run map that we are running probably just don't end it don't end on the on, on the path that we want, and we need all to share our experience and be sure that we are running the good way or not. Because we probably need to jump to other way because we are we will be no success on that, and that's the point. And we guess that we all the community can help us together to short it out the time that the human will need to provide good patterns to really correction and in the future they even twins. You know? But that's the that's the point. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is the last question. In, um, thank you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you.